six Iowa on the road to play number seven Maryland. It's Big Ten women's basketball in prime time on the Big Ten Network. The Big Ten standings look like this at the very top. Indiana has clinched a share of the Big Ten regular season championship, but they haven't clinched the whole thing. That's because Iowa can still win the other share of it, depending on what happens. For Iowa, they of course have the ultimate Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Caitlin Clark on one side, and Monica Sinano on the other. As for Maryland, focus on the bottom center there, Cheyenne Sellers, so important to this team, but in the first meeting against Iowa, she got in foul trouble. Their last game, Saturday, against Michigan State she fouled out they need her on the court tonight they need her not just what she brings on the defensive end of the floor but her energy they need her production she's gonna have to hunt shots buckle up folks this is gonna be fun two of the best fastest highest scoring teams in the country face off each squad looking for their fourth top 10 win of the season each squad still with a chance to be the two seed in the upcoming Big Ten tournament there's Sellers with the first shot of the game, and Masonis keeps it alive. Keep an eye right here. Caitlin Clark is not playing Aliza Pinzon. She is helping every time Diamond Miller drops. Yeah, they do such a good job of moving the basketball, multiple players getting touches, and being in attack mode. There are multiple opportunities. Abby Myers can't finish the reverse, and here come the Hawkeyes. Terps poke their hands in. Faith Masonis creates a turnover. Sellers. Ah. Out of bounds, it'll stay here. Maryland has missed their first four attempts of the game. We're not even one minute into play. Elisa Pinzines that were the first two points of the contest. And it looks like the Iowa Hawkeye game plan is to force Elisa Pinzon to knock down shots. If she can step up and do that consistently, that is certainly a plus for Maryland. Gabby Marshall gets the first points for the visitors. Mike, this is huge, the way that Gabby Marshall's been shooting the ball over the last few ball games. She had struggled from the floor most of the season, but has found her range. Cheyenne Sell. Here comes Caitlin Clark, yet to shoot today. That didn't take long. Book it. Mike, you can't wait to get Caitlin Clark. You have to have somebody pick her up. Masonis getting a few touches early on. Pinzon will be short on that three. Clark with the board. We talk so much about Caitlin Clark scoring and her assists. She's an amazing rebounder as well. And of course, she'll fire from anywhere. Rattling out. Kept alive. Warnock. And the foul. She'll head to the line. Again, Warnock at the free throw line. 79% free throw shooter on the season. Iowa with an early 9-5 lead. And Iowa continuing to change up their defense. Going to the zone, looking to match up. Lavender Briggs drills her first three-point attempt of the day. Warnock, hope you like your scoring, folks. This is what it's going to be like all night long. May Alexander checked into the game. The floater is good. And this is the key, right? If you're playing Iowa, you got to find a way to be able to continue to score with them. Maryland can score. Great work by Faith Masonis trying to front Monica Sinano, not allowing her to get a touch. Yeah, we haven't called Sinano's name at all offensively so far. Martin in the paint for two. I mean, she's an <laughs> right. incredible player. She and Clark in their last game combined for 70 points against Maryland. As there's another two for Brene Alexander. But she emphasized again that tr transition defense is going to be so important for them. That's Molly Davis with her first shot of the day. No, but she'll head to the free throw line. I mean, they're, they're competitors, a lot of new faces who have come together. I mean, I think this is one of the best coaching jobs that she has done so quickly and peeking at the right time. They lost to Wusu. Reese Collins, and you're sitting with a 13 and 3 record in an amazing Big Ten. Diamond Miller yet to score. And Sellers, her second three pointer of the evening. They're the reigning Big Ten tournament champions. 
Edwards. It's not that they don't want that this year. What they really want is a deep run in March. Clark unloads from deep. Eight assists and seven rebounds, as she always does. Sydney Falter with the steal. Clark in the paint. Here comes Sellers. Miller's up and out. Loses it, and a falter hits the ground hard. And does a great job of finding her way to the free throw line. There are only three players in the country who shoot more free throw attempts than Diamond Miller. Download and subscribe today. Miller hits them both. Those are her first points against Iowa. Sellers with a steal. So important to that defense. Miller and Sellers back and forth. The putback is good off the glass for Briggs. Marshall, baseline, four on the game clock. Out of bounds. Their seventh turnover. Sellers from half court. Patient, making sure you get the best shot on the floor, contested threes you can get at any point in the shot clock, and that's exactly what Brenda Freeze was telling her team. Clark and Sonano combined for 70 points in their meeting three weeks ago. They've combined for six only after the first quarter. Renee Alexander for the Terps, it's good. Maryland takes the lead. When you consider Maryland started this game three of 12 shooting, and now they have the lead. That's pretty impressive. We saw them in shoot around, and even for 30, 45 minutes after shoot around, lots of players getting up shots. It's about reps, it's about confidence, and they are playing confident right now. We see the three point field goals tonight versus they were only two of 18 in their first meeting. Already made four so far tonight. Kate uh -huh. Martin traveling and another turnover for the Hawkeyes. You mentioned how big fouls have been a problem for Maryland, especially with Miller. It was one of the things that Brenda Freeze mentioned to us. Diamond Miller, Cheyenne Sellers, they've got to play disciplined defense, not take any chances. Sellers on Sonano. Myers with the board. Briggs miss. It's fun watching Caitlin Clark's eyes the second she gets a rebound. It's always up looking if someone's running. She finds her partner, Sonano! Her first bucket of the night with a chance at a three-point play. They've been physical inside, posting for the lob. The help is late. She's able to go up through the contact and finish. I mean, she has been consistently one of the best finishers in the country. Not a lot of wasted movement. She rarely puts the ball on the floor. 20 points in her last game, 28 in the first meeting with Maryland. She literally makes two-thirds of her shots from the floor, 67%. When you take Diamond Miller off the floor, you take away the one person who attacks the rim, who forces defensive rotation by getting downhill. Someone's going to have to do that for Maryland. I think it's got to be Cheyenne Sellers. Second opportunity, shot clock back at 20. Clark falls down, defending Myers. She'll take that three all day long. Abby Myers, one of the 10 best three-point shooters in the Big Ten. One of the huge transfer pickups for this Terps team. Clark creates space, misses the shot. Briggs feeling it. Briggs has eight points. That's tops in this game. And the Terps are up by six. We're just not running our offense. We don't run our offense. Are you ready? We don't get open yeah. shots. We don't get drives. We
We don't get cuts. We must run our offense. For some reason, we're not. All right, she doesn't know why. Do you know why? <laughs> well, certainly the Maryland defensive pressure has a lot to do with it. They're really making things difficult. Iowa's tending to get tunnel vision, trying to make things happen on one side of the floor, not really working the ball side to side. And, you know, one of the concerns for Lisa Bluter was their turnovers. They turned the ball over 19 times in their last matchup. Eight turnovers means eight less possessions that you can get a shot for Caitlin Clark, for Monica Simano, and the hot streak from three for the Terps continues. Abby Myers hit both three-point shots in this game. She's got 54 made threes on the season. See, two people on Caitlin Clark every time. They're going to make McKenna Warnock beat you, and she did not on that shot. Another one that looked like it was going down but popped out. Myers! There's Warnock. I'm still impressed with their defense on Sonata. And she has only taken two shots all game. In the possessions where Monica Sonano could possibly have a one-on-one -on -one coverage, they're not able to see her because the perimeter defense by Maryland is so good, putting so much pressure on the ball handlers. Strong pass from Masonis over to Briggs. It rolls in. You talked before the game about the importance of Lavender Briggs. Yeah, getting bench production. You know, Lavender Briggs is a player who is a second-team All-SEC, has found a different role here in Maryland, but certainly has that potential. Martin's three is offline, and Iowa's gone cold. They've missed five straight field goal attempts. Three balls are falling all over the place for the Terps. Brene Alexander drills it, and Lisa Bluter wants to talk things over. Since Diamond Miller went to the bench, Maryland's on a 14-2 run. Now they're going to be in a boxing one, chasing Caitlin Clark, switching every time she comes off of the screen. 14 unanswered points for Maryland. Molly Davis will fire. A falter with the putback. That ends a scoring drought of almost four minutes. Another open look. For You can't get lost in transition defense. The way that Maryland is shooting the basketball right now, you've got to run them off the three-point line, force somebody to put the ball on the floor. Warnock can't handle the pass from Clark, and nothing is going the Hawkeyes' way right now. Masonis. <laughs> Along two! Maryland's feeling it! Clark, just in front of the logo. Batted out to Warnock. She'll fire from deep. This is exactly what Lisa Bluter's talking about. You don't have to come across and just start chucking. So right away, two shot opportunities, two quick shots. They're not forcing Maryland to defend. And Brene Alexander with her fourth three of the first half. They are a 35% three-point shooting team. They made 10 of 17 tonight against a top 10 opponent. Warnock off the glass and in. With Abby Myers. There's a turnover, and the Hawks are going to try to run. Clark pounded by Bree McDaniel all the way to the lane. And that's where it can get dangerous. Aliza Pinzon. Alexander, what a half she's having. Masonis, the second opportunity. McCabe, the feed from Clark. Myers has it. And up by 18, the Terps have a chance to stretch that to 20 as we go to the break. Three to shoot. 
Masonis. The shot misses, but what a second quarter for the home team. These last 10 minutes, they outscored Iowa 27 to 8. You said something to me right when we took off our headsets. You said, Clark's not done. No. <laughs> I was not done. I mean, they're too good offensively. They can find the, the, the bucket easily and quickly. But for Maryland, it's keeping up the energy and the execution on the defensive end, and that's a good start. Miller with the steal, pins on with the finish. And then another turnover right away. This time, Myers is pushing. It's amazing to think they had that incredible first half, and yet Diamond Miller is sitting there with only two points. Their top scorer barely did anything offensively, and they're up this big on a top 10 team. Maryland held Iowa to only eight points in that second quarter. That is the first single-digit scoring quarter for the Hawkeyes all season. That's staggering. First single-digit. Maryland coming back. This is the largest lead of the game for Maryland. Gabby Marshall hits the three-pointer. Marshall's second of the game. Masonis baseline good. You mentioned it's got to be someone besides their normal stars. Only five bench points for Iowa. You see on the backside, Cheyenne Sellers face guarding Caitlin Clark. That's Martin's second field goal of the evening. Sellers. She's up to eight points to go along with eight rebounds and five assists today. Marshall! Gabby Marshall continues to stay hot. Last five games was seven of nine, is three for three here tonight. They've been looking for who can be that third scorer. They know they'll get points from Clark. They know they'll get points from Sonano. Fouls on Kate Martin, her second. Remember, Maryland was in big foul trouble in the first meeting. Six different players for the Turks had four fouls. All of Diamond Miller's points have come at the free throw line. There haven't been many opportunities for them to run the ball. They get one here. Clark's shot won't go, but she'll shoot. Second foul on Abby Myers. Caitlin Clark's first free throws of the day. We got a full house back in Chicago, by the way, when our game is done. You're going to get all the news and highlights from around the conference on the big show. 11 Eastern tonight, 10 Central. Rick Pizzo, Megan McEwen, Rafael Davis, Bruce Weber on hand as well. So explain to me what it is Maryland's done to Caitlin Clark to keep the likely national player of the year down to this type of point production so far? Well, look, they're just trying to make it difficult. So they're face guarding her. They're trying to bring two, three, four red jerseys at her every time. But Caitlin Clark just hasn't found the bottom of the net. I mean, it's just a matter of time. And it's sometimes disheartening when you're struck. Renee Alexander is having a wonderful game. And that ball was purely stolen by Diamond Miller. Down to the other end she goes to Sellers. Walter has it. Martin is running. Too strong to Sinano. Sinano gets the steal. Miller steals it back. Alexander. Take a break, Brene! tonight comes in instant offense and in transition she was feeling it and this crowd's feeling it michael i'll say Whew. now steph i know you were watching the iowa huddle there in that last time out what did you see well kate martin very vocal in the huddle you know this is an experienced iowa team you know kate martin is a is a great leader and we listened into the Iowa huddle earlier in the first half, and Lisa Bluter said, we're not running our offense, and I don't know why. Maybe that right there was what they need to do. A touch from Monica Sinano, making only her second field goal of the day. Pass ahead to Warnock. Beautiful feed to a falter. 
when you're struggling shooting the ball, you got to find a way to get some easy buckets. Layups and free throws are great ways to do that. Have to remember, Iowa led at the end of the first quarter, 20 to 19. Briggs gets her own board and follows it up. And that's a big miss for the Hawkeyes. Warnock. Oh, she's just having an off shooting night. Three for 12. Well, now there's hesitation. There's second guessing. You know, Iowa, when they're at their best, the ball is moving quickly. Multiple players are touching it. Now it's getting stuck with Gabby Marshall. Gabby Marshall with nine points this quarter. 12 in the game is a team high. That's her season high, by the way. Sellers stuck underneath. Somehow gets it out to Briggs, who's on fire! Can't say enough about Lavender Briggs and Brene Alexander off the bench. There's a steal. More from Briggs. No, but a whistle. Brene Alexander, instant offense. Three fouls on Hannah Stelke now. Perfect three for three from deep. Maryland now has 13 three-pointers, the most they've had in a game all year. It's a player in Caitlin Clark and Monica Sanana who are the top of every scouting report, and it's just, are you able to execute at a high level? They've been here before, and now they've got to work through it. Two from Stulke, her first two points of the game. Clark forces the turnover, reaching in. And it's a box and one, force the defense to shift. A falter all the way. It's an Iowa team who set a record for points in a Big Ten game with 111 against Rutgers. They've scored 90 points or more 11 times, and yet they have not even 50 here. Hey, Alexander's up to 24. Approaching her career high. Three to shoot. The incredible performance for Maryland. And it's not their normal scoring star doing the load of the work. We talked about you gotta empty your tank, right? We gotta empty our tank. We're nowhere near, all right? We 10 minutes to go and then we're nowhere near. I mean, that echoes what you were saying. Nobody counts out the number one scoring team in the country, even when it's this much of a deficit and only one quarter to go. Staying disciplined in what you're trying to get, working the clock and getting the best shot offensively. Well, they brought in a lot of new pieces, but those are veteran pieces. Those are players who have had multiple years at their previous schools. Marshall's been a spark of offense for them. You see how quickly the closeout came? Abby Marshall thought she was going to have a sliver of daylight, and she didn't. Abby Myers got there on the closeout. Feels like, again, we mentioned this a moment ago, every time you think, well, maybe that's the the crack, the little opening in the door for them to find a comeback. Maryland finds a way to close that door immediately, like right there with Masonis, the second opportunity. Marshall with the air ball three, put back by a falter. We saw that urgency today in shoot around. Yep. I mean, everybody locked in, everybody here early, staying after. They stayed very late after. Well, this is a Maryland team that is playing their best basketball right now yep. at this point in the season, and that's exactly what you want. Peaking at the perfect time. Warnock had such a tough night shooting today. Another closeout by Sellers. Stay here. And down 26 with less than seven minutes to go. Makes it hard to feel that's going to happen which means the Hoosiers would be the Big Ten champions outright. Warnock with three on the shot clock, loses it. Miller, all alone. My Cheyenne Sellers said to us after shoot around today, we got embarrassed when we played at Iowa. We're going to come out, we've got to stay locked in, we've got to do what we do best, and they've been able to do that. You know, that first game we talked about between these two is just so drastically different. Iowa scored 96 points. That's the most Maryland's given up all season. And Mike, you're used to seeing Caitlin Clark all over the floor, right? With the ball, without the ball. 
I mean, like great scorers do, logging a lot of miles. Diamond Miller was barely a part of this team offensively in the first half, and that didn't really need her. But now she's up to 14 points as the lead for Maryland grows. This is full-on celebration in College Park. Well, bad shots are just as bad as turnovers in transition, and Seller is able to get the bucket and the opportunity for the N1. Lack of player movement, yep. not running the offense. They have been completely taken out of anything that they want to do on the offensive end of the floor. Defense for Maryland has grown so much over the season. They're better at not turning the ball over. They're better at forcing turnover. She knows we're not the tallest team. We don't have the biggest big, so we have to create turnovers. And man, are they great at it. Averaging 19 a game. They surpassed that a while ago here. Myers. When you think about what this win means for Maryland, not just the opportunity to play for a number two seed. The continual effort by this team to be peaking at the right time, continuing to come together, and seeding in the postseason in the NCAA tournament. So much of being positioned to make a run, a deep run in the NCAA tournament, is about your seeding. It's about your matchups. Mm -hmm. Well, and think of this. Autumn Johnson does the projection. She has both of these teams tonight as two seats. This win is right now. As Rick mentioned, he and Megan will talk about everything about this massive game and everything to think about in this final week of the regular season. That's an offensive foul on the Terps. I mean, this is a team, and again, you think about all of the new faces. One returning starter, multiple new faces. You have to blend this team together. Yep. They found the right rotations. And the depth they brought in, we, we mentioned the transfers, Myers, Alexander, Briggs. You pointed out they were all experienced players at various different programs. They had it in Lavender Briggs scoring. The depth that provides, this Maryland team makes them so scary entering the month of March. Clark hits the three, but far too little and way too late for Iowa. You want to hear a couple crazy stats? I do. This will be the 91st ranked win in Brenda Freeze's career. Six Elite Eights, ten Sweet Sixteens. Won that 06 National Championship, of course. Winning as coach in this great program's great history. Well, the 2006 National Champions, and you mentioned the multiple Final Fours. A number of terrific players who have been through this program. And the one consistency, Brenda Freeze on the sidelines, challenging her teams. You want a crazier stat? I do. Since Maryland joined the Big Ten in 2014, they've won 87% of their Big Ten games. When Brenda Freeze and the Terps joined this conference, is that when things started to change? Well, I think this, the change when Maryland joined the Big Ten was in how the game was played, right? The Big Ten was traditionally a slower paced power type of offense. Maryland at that point had come from the ACC, which was a very fast paced, you know, league that got up and down the floor, that was very versatile. And in order to keep up with Maryland at the time, the Big Ten coaches had to change and had to pivot. And I give these coaches a lot of credit. The different types of players, not a lot of big teams in the Final Four. So you change your scheduling. Who are you playing in the non-conference? How are you challenging yourself? They pivoted, they challenged themselves, they changed the way that they approached scheduling, offense, defense, and now the league is the toughest, deepest league in the country. It's pretty incredible. And you think of programs that had long stretches of struggling, like Indiana, like Illinois, that are now looking like really good teams. Look at that move. So sweet by Miller. She's up to 16. And there's a turnover. You saw Cheyenne Sellers take a break, by the way. How's this for a stat line for her? 17 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. 
I mean, Cheyenne Sellers is the Energizer Bunny, yeah. and I love that she gets excited about defensive challenges. She always wants to guard the opponent's best player. She's taken her offensive game to another level this season. I mean, she's playing a point guard position facilitating. She really is the ultimate utility player. Caitlin Clark is out of the game. Monica Sonano is out of the game. Clark had 18 points, five rebounds, four assists. Sonano, four points, nine rebounds. You gotta get ready to, to go home and to play Indiana at home, and you gotta get ready for the postseason. So, sometimes you have these days. Give Maryland all the credit in the world for coming out and setting the tone from the opening tip. And if you're the Hawkeyes, you just got to move on. Yep. You got to turn the page quickly. Think of it this way, how different these two meetings were between these squads. Three weeks ago when they met, Iowa scored 96 points, which was the most Maryland had given up all year. They were ready for this challenge. They came out and they executed at a high level. And I think our friends in the studio were right. It's hard to not be more impressed with their defense than anything else. And of course, the other major storyline is the three-pointers. Maryland's got 14 of them. That's a season high. That was such a dagger as they dominated. So Maryland will even up the series with the Iowa Hawkeyes here. Iowa still will be looking to win at Maryland. They've only won one time on the road in College Park. That was back in 92 when it was the Cole Fieldhouse where they were playing. What a difference a few weeks makes. The Maryland Terrapins dominate Iowa. They win their fourth top 10 game this season. That's the first time since the 1970s. The Terps and the Hoosiers are the only squads in the country with four wins over top 10 ranked opponents. And congratulations to the Indiana Hoosiers, who now officially clinch outright the Big Ten Championship in 2023. Well, a terrific effort all around by the Terps. Offensively, defensively, starters, bench production. It was an incredible team effort. Brene Alexander leads the way with 24 points. Cheyenne Sellers close to a triple-double. Lavender Briggs throwing in 19. Brenda Freeze picks up her 29th win over a top 10 ranked team while at Maryland. And the Terps improved to 35 and one at home in February the last 10 years. That does it from the Xfinity Center. 96 to 68, Maryland gets a top 10 win over Iowa. For Stephanie White and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Mike Call. We're gonna take you to Chicago. Our post game show starts in moments. That'll do it. Congrats to the Turks.